In this video, I'll be revealing my $30,000 dividend stock portfolio that I've been building since January of 2020. So stay tuned as I show all 50 of my positions and my dividend income thus far. first episode of Dividend Data. My name is Zach and I'll be sharing my investment journey on this channel. Every month I'll be doing a full breakdown of my portfolio and be making weekly videos doing in-depth analysis of my stocks. I'd greatly appreciate if you subscribe so that you can follow my journey. So let's get down to business. So here in the summary table we can see that I've invested $32,939 into this portfolio and it has a current value of $29,879. So I'm down $3,060, which isn't terrible given the collapse of the economy over the past few months. I think that uh, in a few months, this portfolio will be well in the green. My dividend yield on cost is 4.578%, and my compound dividend yield is 4.609%. Over time, we will see the gap between my compounded yield and my standard yield increase significantly. This is because the reinvestment of dividends increasing my shares and yield at no extra cost to me. So over time, my yield will increase dramatically, and that isn't even accounting for uh, dividend increases in the companies themselves. So here you can see the growth of my portfolio over time. Prior to January, this was my primary investment account, and it held multiple types of stocks, not only dividend stocks. So as you can see, in January, I opened a new account and moved my non-dividend stocks out. Since then, I've been investing heavily and dollar cost averaging on dividend stocks in my watch list. As shown in the summary table, I invested over $32,000, which is why you can see my portfolio is steadily increasing, even though the market as a whole has seen a major drop off. In this chart, you can see how my portfolio's cost is currently allocated by sector. You can see that energy, industrial, and real estate are my top investments, accounting for 49% of my dollars invested. Utilities, technology, and healthcare are currently my lowest investments, and I hope to raise their allocation moving forward. All right, so now let's go in depth on each sector. Okay, so in the energy sector, I have ExxonMobil, Chevron, National Fuel Gas Company, Enterprise Products Partners, UGI Corporation, Occidental Petroleum, and Helmerk and Payne. Of these holdings, Exxon and Chevron are definitely my top two holdings, and I think the safest and strongest dividends out of all of them. You can see right now my cost per share is still above the price they're going at right now but I already have a significant amount in my uh, portfolio that I'm not focusing on putting more money there, even though I could be lowering my average cost. But if you look historically, these are still very good prices, and in not too long, I think I will be definitely in the green on these. The main company here that I'm buying right now is UGI Corp. It's a natural gas company, and I think it has a really strong dividend and a good balance sheet. And I'd like to lower my costs on it and just get more money, bring it up to like possibly the thousand dollar tier, which it would bring it around Chevron and Exxon. So far, I put a lot of money into the energy sector and I'm looking to diversify going forward into other sectors. OK, so here at industrials, you can see I have 3M, General Electric, AO Smith Corporation and Emerson Electric. So 3M is my top holding here and it currently has a $2,233 value. I really like 3M, I think it has a strong dividend yield right now. As you can see, my cost per share and the price are very close at the moment, and as the price goes down a little bit during the volatility upcoming, I am definitely gonna be buying up more shares so that I can lower this cost even more. And below 3M, you will see one of my least favorite stocks I own, and I have owned this for a long time, and it is General Electric. And as you can see here is the difference between the cost and the current value. It has not performed well for me. And since I bought it, they have slashed their dividend down to basically a penny a quarter. Truly, I'm not really sure why I still have it, but I am holding on to it because it seems to be turning the corner and I have held on to it this long. Since my portfolio is long-term focused, hopefully in a year or two or three, GE will come back to a better standing and I'll be able to see some of the capital gains cost, but mostly what I'm hoping is they increase the dividend. So currently in this sector, I'm buying more of 3M and Emerson. All right, into the real estate sector. 
So here in the real estate sector, I have Federal Realty Investment Trust, Well Tower Incorporated, Realty Income Corp, uh, Tanger Factory Outlet Center, and Iron Mountain Incorporated. So in this sector, uh, FRT is my top holding, and I'm very happy with that at the moment. It has a great yield, a strong balance sheet, and historically, I'm getting it at an amazing price. As you can see, my cost per, per share is $80.50 and the price right now is $78, but historically this trades between $130 and $150. Along with this, it typically has like a 3.5% yield, and my current yield is a 5.2%, so I am in a fantastic position with FRT, and with the volatility in the market, I am looking to pick up a lot more FRT in the future. Below that I have Well, and this is a healthcare and senior living REIT. Well actually recently decreased their dividend and it is one of five of my 50 companies that has lowered their dividend during this uh, downward market. I still have a very positive view of Well Tower in the long term and I think it will be a staple in my portfolio. Below that I have O, which is Realty Income. And I really want to increase my stake in O. It's one of the companies that I'm focusing on buying right now because it's a very strong dividend and it's a monthly dividend, which is unique in my portfolio. And it will really even out the income. Historically, O is actually still a good price right now, even though it's $54 and my cost per share is 48. But that is only because I bought uh, all of my O position at very good prices. So I'll actually be buying more O, even when it's above my cost per share, but especially buying more if it falls below my cost per share. Below that, I have Tanger Factory Outlets, which is an outlet company. It has been hit very hard as of late, and they've actually renewed their dividend. So although I'm not buying more of it at this time, because I think it's kind of a risky buy at the time, and I have better places to be putting my money, I am still going to be holding it in the long term, because I think it will bounce back and have a good long term future. All right, so in the financial services sector, I have United Bank Shares Incorporated, Franklin Resources, Invesco, Mercury General, and People's United Financial Bank. So in this sector, my main holdings are UBSI, Ben, and Invesco. Of this group, Invesco lowered their dividend and is now 4.9%. But again, I have good long-term thoughts about all three of these companies, and I will strategically be looking to lower my cost per share in the upcoming month. Okay, so in the consumer defensive sector, my holdings are B&G Foods, Kraft Heinz, Coca-Cola, Altria Group, Universal Corp, PepsiCo, and Tootsie Roll Industries. Right now, my top holding is B&G Foods, and that is because it has been steadily rising over the past few months. B&G Foods has a very strong dividend at a ridiculous yield, to be honest, but it seems as though they'll be able to hold their yield, and I don't see indications that they will be cutting anytime soon. So right now, because of the high price it's trading at, I'm not buying more of B&G Foods, and I'm looking to allocate my money into other stocks in the sector. For example, Coca-Cola and Altria Group are positions that I'm trying to increase dramatically, as well as PepsiCo, but PepsiCo is trading at a very high price at the moment. Another strong position I have in this sector is Kraft Heinz, and they're my second largest holding. And I see a strong future for Kraft Heinz. They have a strong yield, and it doesn't seem like they're going to de be decreasing their dividend anytime soon. So if the price can get more around to where my cost per share is, I will definitely be picking more Kraft Heinz up. But really at the moment, Coca-Cola and Altria Group are my main focuses. My goal is to get these over $1,000 each in the upcoming months. Okay, so in the consumer cyclical sector, I have McDonald's, Sunoco Products, Genuine Parts, Leggett & Platt, and the Waco Group. So here McDonald's is my top holding, and I think they'll have a strong dividend for years to come. And I think McDonald's is a brand that really isn't going anywhere anytime soon. I would like to add more McDonald's to my portfolio, but as you can see, the current price is $180, which is on the high end. And as you can see, my cost per share is much lower at $145. Another company in this sector that I'm trying to increase is Leggett and & Platt, and this is because it's trading at a great historical price, and the dividend yield at this time is very high, and Leggett and & Platt has a very strong dividend that has been increasing for over 47 years. So I will definitely be looking to pick up more of Leg in the future. Okay, so in the communication services sector, you can see I have Disney, AT&T, Telephone and Data Systems Incorporated, Verizon, 
and the Meredith Corporation. So Disney recently announced they were suspending their semi-annual dividend. However, this doesn't really change my long-term view towards Disney because I view them as a very strong company. That in the long term definitely will be a focus of my portfolio. Below that is AT&T, and this has a very strong dividend yield. On top of this, they have very strong fundamentals, and it doesn't seem like they will be cutting their dividend anytime soon. So AT&T is a company that I'm trying to load up on as much as possible right now. And you can see it's trading at $29 right now, and my cost per share is $28.87. So I've been really focusing on trying to get as much AT&T at a good price as I can right now. And below this, uh, Verizon is the other holding that I'm looking to increase a lot, but Verizon's trading relatively high. So if it falls back down to where my cost per share is, I will definitely be looking to pick up more of Verizon. Okay, so in the materials sector, I have Scott Miracle Grow. Uh, Nucor Corporation, and Dow Incorporated. So Scott Miracle Grow is a company I've held for a while, and I think it has good long-term uh, potential. As you can see, the dividend is 2.56%, which is not incredibly high, but they've been increasing their dividend, and I think it's pretty safe for the future. Below that is NUE, and this is another company I'm looking to get more of. I find them very interesting because they're a steel recycling company, and I think they will definitely have a large long-term future. Below that is Dow, and they have a shorter term dividend, but they've voiced that they're committed to having a dividend be a strong feature of their stock. And as you can see, the yield right now is nearly 10%. It's not a main focus of mine at the moment, but if the price does get back down to where my cost per share is, I'll probably look at picking up more of them. Okay, so in the healthcare sector, my holdings are Pfizer, Walgreens, and Johnson & Johnson. Pfizer is my top holding, and I feel pretty comfortable about that. It has a 4.2% yield, and I see them as being able to raise their dividend for many years to come. I am looking at picking up more Pfizer as it gets closer to my cost per share. But really, I'm looking at picking up much more J&J &J because it's kind of a titan in the healthcare industry, and they have a very strong dividend that they've been increasing for a long, long time. But as you can see, it's trading at a very high price right now, and I think I'll be buying more of it if it gets into the 130s. Other companies in the healthcare sector that I don't actually own right now is AbV. I'm looking at picking up a lot more of AbV, so you may see AbV added to this uh, sector in the future for me. Okay, so in the technology sector, my stocks are Lidos, IBM, Cisco, and DXC Technology. Lidos is my top value holding, and I invest in Lidos because I actually had an internship there. And I wanted to feel like I had some skin in the game. <laughs> but it's actually turned into a, be a good pick for me because, you, as you can see, I've had good capital gains growth. And the dividend's pretty strong as well. And I think Lidos will be a good long-term company. So I think their dividend will be around for a long time. IBM is my second holding in technology. They have a strong dividend, but I have mixed feelings about them as a company and their long-term uh, future. That goes for the same for Cisco. I don't really feel comfortable that much, which is why I haven't been buying too much more Cisco. And this bottom one, DXC Technology, is a new company. It's new to my radar. I haven't heard of it before. But I noticed they have a strong yield, and I've been doing more research into the company as a whole. It seems like they have very strong revenues, and their payout ratio is extremely low at the moment. So it seems like they have a lot of room to grow their dividend with time. So this might be an interesting one to pick up. And lastly, in the utilities sector, I have Centerpoint Energy and Consolidated Edison. Uh, CNP cut their dividend recently to now it's only a 2.43% dividend. And I think in the long term, they'll be able to bounce back fine and the dividend will return to at least where it was at. Edison is one that I'm looking to pick up a lot more of because they have a fantastic historical dividend that has been paying for a long time, like I'm talking 40 years long time. So I just got my first share recently and I'll be looking to buy more of them in the near future. Okay, so my estimated dividend income over the next year is $1,586. As you can see by the chart showing how the dividend income is distributed by sector, energy is about 25% of my income, followed by real estate at 18.1%. 
consumer defensive at 14.5% and financial services at 10%. As you may have noticed, industrials only accounts for 6.62% of my dividend income, even though it's 15.6% of the dollars invested in my portfolio. As I mentioned earlier, this is due to the failure of General Electric and GE has been the largest disappointment in my portfolio, but it's one that I've been holding since 2017. So it's not really a part of my recent strategy. I look as GE is just the weight holding my portfolio down. In this chart, you can see how my estimated dividend income varies by month. As you can tell, the dividends are in cycles, as some are quarterly, monthly, semi-annually, and annually. Here you can see my real dividend income. So this is dividends that I've gotten over the past few months. The real dividend income is delayed from investment as you have to own the company when they declare their dividend in order for you to get it for that period. So as you can see in March, I got $64.19 and in April, I got $86.90. So over time, we will see this increasing dramatically. And my short term goal is to get to a point where I have $200 a month of dividend income coming in. To round out this video, I thought I'd share the stocks I'll be focusing on buying over the next month. That is FRT, Coke, Leg, 3M, MO, O, T, and UGI. I briefly explained this earlier in the video, but you'll be sure to hear me talk about this in upcoming videos as well. Thank you for watching the first episode of Dividend Data, and I'd love if you could show some support by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I'll be giving you updates on my portfolio every month and uploading videos every week. Please comment below if you have any questions about my portfolio, and thank you for watching.